Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now and we thank you and we give you all the praise and the glory that you are so worthy. We thank you for the blood of Jesus and for Calvary. We thank you for the victory in our lives and we thank you, Lord, that you have made us your sons and your daughters and that we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ and that you have created us to be a kingdom of priests. So, Father, I thank you right now to ask that you allow the Holy Spirit to anoint the words that I speak, to open the ears of the hearer, and for us all to be in one accord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go to Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 and 6. Now therefore, if, or if, if, you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then, say then, you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Okay, we see here that the Lord is full of promises for his people. Amen. However, his promises are conditional. We must obey his voice and we must keep his covenants. Amen? Amen. But at the end, I'm going to tell you something that's just so amazing. How do we obey his voice? Papa's got it. By listening. First, before we can obey the voice of the Lord, to listen to. we must recognize the voice of the Lord. Amen. We must know when he's speaking to us Amen. and what he's directing us to do when the Holy Spirit is moving through us. And we have to know that we know that we know Amen. his voice. Amen. Amen. How do we have this assurance? He promises us that we will know his voice. Amen. On John chapter 10, verse 16, and other sheep I have, which are not of this whole, them also must I bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Amen. Amen. This reminds me of Ephesians chapter 2, where we're told that Jesus has torn down the middle wall of separation between the Jews and the Gentiles. Right now. And that out of the two, he's made one new man oh, through Jesus yeah. Christ. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, check it out for yourself, never take my word. Always go and check the scripture out when somebody puts it to you. Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that Jesus has torn down that new wall of separation between the Jew and the Gentile, and that out of the two, he's made one new man. Praise God. Let that sink in. Yes. Let it sink in. Yes. There are so many Christians today that do not want to accept the fact that we have been grafted in if we're Gentiles into the family of God. And that the Jewish people were already God's children and that he has a covenant and a plan for them as well. And I'm not preaching a dual covenant, okay? I'm not. It's all the same, the blood of Jesus, amen? Amen. But God is faithful to reveal himself in the person of his son to the unbeliever. Yes. To the Jewish unbeliever, to the Gentile unbeliever. All right. God is faithful to reveal his plan of salvation yes, Lord Jesus. because he has sent the Holy Spirit. Yes, he has. And the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. Remember, what does God look upon? When God looks upon us, does he look at how we're dressed? No. Does he look at even what we speak? Does he look at the car we drive, the house we live in, All right. whether we come on time to church or not, whether we sit in the front pew or the back pew? Does Jesus shine in our lives? Man. What does he look at? All it is. Our hearts. Our hearts. You say, a willing heart is acceptable unto him. Amen? Man. And only God knows if your heart is willing. This is why Jesus taught us so many times not to judge others. Because only God 
is the righteous judge. Yes, he because is. only God can search our hearts, and only Amen. God can convict us through his Holy Spirit yeah. of sin yeah. in our lives. Amen. You don't know. I don't know. Hallelujah. How many times have you seen a criminal arrested for doing a the East Side Rapist here in Sacramento? Just a little while back, that notorious rapist that was rampant throughout all the Sacramento area and put fear into the hearts of women everywhere and men was a retired law enforcement official. All right. Who would have ever thought that a retired person from the law enforcement would have been, back then, an active member of law enforcement committing these crimes? All right, no. Only God Amen. knows the hearts of men. Yes, he does. You can't judge the hearts of men. Amen. And that's why Jesus says not to judge your brothers or your sisters. Amen. You are to love them and pray for them. Yes, yes. And if something looks wrong, you don't go gossiping about it. You take it to the bed. Amen. He looks at the hearts of men. Man, yes, he does. How do we obey his voice? John 10 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Did you did it that simple? My sheep, they hear my voice, and I know them, yeah. and they follow me. Amen. It's that simple. You see, when we are grafted into the family of God, or when we are brought into the body of Messiah, we have a natural desire to do what is right. All right. We have a natural desire desire to obey that voice. After all, God's word tells us that his laws are written on where? Our hearts. They're written on our hearts. Amen. They're already written on our hearts. And so when we have been born again, our nature changes. Now our behavior might not change right away, but our nature changes. We might slip up and go back into something that God had brought us out of, but it's not because we want to. Because we want to serve God. We want to please Him. Amen? Praise the Lord. Anybody been there? Amen. Anybody Amen. ever been there? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Second, we must take action. Romans 2.13. Mm -hmm. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. Amen. Amen. James 1, 22, 1 and 22. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Right. Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. All right. Okay, it's important. If you start deceiving yourself by not obeying God's word often enough, Pretty soon, you don't feel any conviction of right. the things that you should not be doing. Amen? Praise God, praise God. We have to be doers of the word as well. Well, well I can't, Pastor Timothy. You don't know what I'm facing. Oh, yeah. Everybody has those things in their lives. Amen. But the Holy Spirit will allow you to overcome. Yes, it will. We read in... First John, it's not in my notes, I'm going for memory. We read the first John, that if we continue in sin, that we're not his. And then there's a little caveat, but if we sin, we have an advocate who is at the right hand of the Father. That's the issue of Mashiach, Jesus the Messiah. He, but, but wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. That used to confuse me so much. Because it said, if we continue in sin, we're not his. Right, no. But if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Mm -hmm. Jesus, who's at the right hand. Yeah. That sounds like an oxymoron, right? What is the difference? What is the difference? The heart. Yes. And only God knows the heart. Right. Because a willing heart 
is acceptable in the Lord. So if you yeah. want to do what is right, and you're earnestly repenting and seeking the guidance of the Holy Spirit and bleeding the blood of Jesus over your life, if you want to do what is right, God alone knows it. Yes, Amen. The apostle said, what would the apostle Paul say? My spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. The things I hate, I do. And the things I love, I do not do. Can you relate to that? Can you think of something in your life that you really want to do for God? Let's go to the positive first. But for whatever reason, you're never able to do it. I tell you one of those areas for me, for a long time, I wanted to have a devotional time with the Lord before I went to work every morning. This is when I was in the title industry. Well, I lived an hour from my work, and I needed to be to work usually by about seven o'clock. So if I was gonna do that, I would have to leave at six o'clock. I would need about at least a half hour to get ready. It takes me to 5.30. And then if I want to spend an hour with the Lord, it takes me back to 4.30 a.m. Yeah. But you know the Hinkle family, we don't go to bed till two or three o'clock in the morning. How are we gonna get up at 4.30 and have our private time with the Lord. All right, now. For about a year, I struggled. Every morning, I would try to get up at 4.30, and I'd hit the snooze. Hit the snooze. And then it got to be, instead of a blessing to get up and spend time with the Lord, All right, yes, it, it began to be a drudgery. Yeah. Because I kept feeling. I didn't understand what I needed to do to get up and spend that time with the Lord. All right. Then what happened? Think about it. I became ashamed. Oh Lord, I told you I was gonna get up and spend an hour in the morning with you. And I think I did it once this week. I'm so ashamed. All right. Does the devil ever do that to you? Yes. Who's the accuser, brother? The devil. So when you start beating yourself up for anything you've done wrong, I'm not talking about a holy conviction coming from the Holy Spirit of God. I'm talking about guilt and shame that's coming from the devil. There's a big difference. One day, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, you really wanted to do it. With all of your heart. You really wanted to. Abba knows that. Think about it. Abba, Daddy, God. Yes. You really wanted to do it. With all of your heart. Abba knows that. So it's as if you already have. All right, you know. Be released from that burden. Does that make any sense? Yes. God looks at our heart. And then he did something beautiful. He gave me a time. My life changed and my schedule changed. He gave me a time to where not only could I have a time with the Lord, my children before school and I would have a time with the Lord every morning for a good season. So not only did I get that enrichment, but the Lord provided a time for my children to be raised up in the Word. Amen. We read the Bible all the way through. My children all know the word inside now backwards. And they all love God. Hallelujah. What a reward. I wanted to have personal time for my own benefit. And instead, my entire family benefit. Amen. Praise God. And they all know the Lord. Amen. Amen. How do we become doers of the word? We follow his voice first by following his word, which is the Bible. Amen? Amen. Amen? We listen to his voice by spending time in his presence, which is part of what we do in church. We worship and we pray. Praise God. But we shouldn't be doing that at home. Amen. The word of God says to pray without ceasing. 
That means that you're, you should have an attitude of prayer. You should be in communication all the time with our Father God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, wow, that's a, it's not impossible. You know, if something good happens to me instinctively, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to lift myself up at all. But to say what happens is when you're in the habit of I have to depend on God for everything, you know. Praise God. For everything. Amen. Amen. And when you're just hanging on sometimes by your fingernails, and yeah, and that's, that's where you're at, it causes you to pray an awful lot. Amen. But you know what? What I thought was bad, being in those situations where I had to hang on and pray a lot, ended up being good because it created a habit of going through my day, Yes. Talking to the Lord regularly. When I would get in my car, oh, thank you, Jesus. And I started noticing instead of my cry being, help! <laughs> Sometimes. But I started noticing that my cries began to be crying out to the Lord for his goodness. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And I started looking, wait. I'm not miserable anymore. Yes. I don't know if any of you know what it's like to go through depression. And wow. before I was pastoring, I went through a very, very dark time of depression. And it tries to come back sometimes. Wow. But I just got a hold of some scriptures. And I would say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy and speak full, full of glory. And I would go on and I would repeat these things to myself and I would pray throughout the day. And finally, I wasn't I didn't notice I wasn't depressed anymore. It wasn't like somebody flipped the switch. It was like by being in the presence of the Lord, talking to him and claiming his promises in his word, it changed who I was because God's word changes us, amen? Time in his presence changes us, amen? amen? As we must obey, even when we don't understand. Amen. Now, I am reminded so many times, when I think of this, I think of crazy things God told his people to do. He told the prophet to go lay in the cities, All right. gates, All right. barely clothed or naked. Depending on what uh, translation you read. Alright. The weeping prophet. I weep too. God told me to lay in the gates of the city. That, you know what everybody was saying. That's not God. <laughs> you know they were. But it says right there that the word of the Lord came to the prophet All right. and told him to do this crazy thing. <laughs> Alright. And he went did it. He obeyed even though he didn't understand, nor did he want to do All right. what he was told to do. We must obey the Lord. You know that it's God. He told you, my sheep know my voice. Amen. The Lord has told me some things. He's told me to go some places. I can never explain it to somebody. But I know when I hear the voice of the Lord, what I'm supposed to go, what I'm supposed to do, who I'm supposed to speak to, what I'm supposed to say, and not say. How do you know that? I don't know it in advance. I know it as I listen to his voice and he gives me direction step by step. How do we know that we are doers? The fruits of the Spirit will be evident in our lives and not the fruits of the flesh. All right. You can read about that in Galatians chapter 5, 16 through 26. I say then, walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. All right. That's all I'm going to read right now. That verse of scripture, Kevin. Why? Because I don't want us to get caught up 
in focusing on sin. You reap what you sow. Okay? We want to focus on the solution, which is what Jesus did on Calvary. Amen? Amen. What the Holy Spirit convicts us of in our heart. Yeah. And when we repent and how Jesus forgave us for our sins God. by the blood of Jesus. Amen. I noticed when I would read that chapter a lot of times out loud in church that I would emails and letters sometimes of people telling me these sinful things that other people in the church were doing. <laughs> you missed the point. First of all, I don't want to know about it. That's God's job to convict it, unless it's affecting the flock. You know. But that's God's job to convict them of anything wrong through his Holy Spirit, and it's their responsibility to either be obedient or not. We won't get into, I don't believe that every time you fall or every time you sin, if you don't repent instantly and you die, you go to hell. I don't believe that. But I do believe we must listen to the Holy Spirit, and we must have a willing heart we must have a repentant heart. We should walk in obedience. We should walk in repentance. Amen. It seems like I regularly, and I have my whole life, I regularly, I'm just driving down the road, thinking I'm doing so well. And then the voice of the Holy Spirit says, hey, oh, what's wrong? You know this or this or that? Uh huh. Hmm. What? You already know. The law's written on your heart. You studied it. And, and look at this or that. <sighs> Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Help me to do better. Show me when I'm doing this. This right. flash, I haven't arrived. And neither have you. And if you think you have, then you really haven't. We should be being conformed to the image of Christ All right. by the power of the Holy Spirit working yeah. in our lives on a daily basis. Right. Each one of us growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ because of the power of God in our lives. Not because we look good at church. Not because if our brothers and sisters or unbelievers examine our lives, they're going to find sin in them. All right, no. No. Because of the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Because of the sacrifice he made of Calvary. And because of the wooing and drawing power of God through his Holy Spirit in our lives. All right. You see... I had one person, well not just one, I'll just say one person. People who left the church. All right, yeah. And they had a meeting with me before they left. And they brought me a list of ten of our members and told me, look, you're allowing all this sin in your church. And they started naming off sin. They've been keeping track. They have been keeping track of other people's sins. All right, my gosh. <laughs> and they were leaving because I was too easy on people. Wow. Oh. I said, I don't like your leaving. <laughs> what? I said, I don't like your leaving. <clears throat> because the word of God says to mark those that cause division in the body and cast them out of the church until they repent. That's the word of God. That's not popular today. All right. But I said, you're, I'm glad you're leaving because you are one of those that I'm going to mark as causing division because you've been spreading these tales against your brothers and sisters throughout our body wow. and now you're trying to poison their shepherd wow. against them. Wow. Guess what? I am not the Holy Spirit. My job is not to show up at your house and make sure you're not sinning. Right. Amen. Amen. That's not my job. And it's not your job to judge 
But what each one of us has the responsibility to do is to let the love of God and the fruits of the Holy Spirit shine through our lives to all of those around us. It should be evident. How many of you ever walked into a store or into a coffee shop or into some place of business or a school or a library where you didn't really know anybody and somebody walks up to you and just their smile and their presence bore witness? Right. The Spirit of God in you bore witness with the Spirit of God in them and you knew they were a believer. Yes. You knew they were a follower of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Has that ever happened? You see, when we are His, people know that. Yeah. And you can be making a mistake, but people still know your gods. All right. And if we are gods, how dare you come against us? All right, now. Whether we're right or wrong, I have four children. Any of you have children? Yeah. Grandchildren? Yeah. Nieces? Nephews? All right. That you love? Then you might scold them. I might scold and correct my own children. All right. But boy, do I get upset. And does Papa Bear come out when I hear somebody else talking about one of my children yes. in a negative way and spreading All right. gossip? Whether it's true or whether it's false. If one of my kids is messing up, I don't need someone that's supposed to be my friend or my brother or my sister in Christ running around making my child look bad to the rest of the world right. so that they don't feel comfortable anymore coming to the body of Christ. Right. All right. That's what happened to me. That's why I left this very church when I was a teenager. I would not come. I said I would never just step foot in here again. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank goodness. Okay. That was a foolish thing, but the Holy Spirit drew me in. Here I am. Amen. The most imperfect pastor, but I love God and I love you. Yes, Man, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have to be careful. Yes. Because even though I was being with Jonah, I was running, God said, Go here, and I got on the ship going there. I was still God's. Yes. I had been bought with a price. That's right. Yes. I had been sealed with salvation until the day. I had been sealed with salvation until the day of his coming. Yes. And I don't like to see what happens to people when they rise up against me. I don't like to see what happens to people when they rise up against you. Mm -hmm. Why is this? Because we're God's children, and whether we're doing right or whether we're doing wrong, if, we're, if it's hurting ourselves, God's going to use it for a lesson. Amen. He's going to teach us a lesson. He's going to draw us to our, by the Holy Spirit to a place of repentance. Mm -hmm. And He's going to renew us like the heal. Amen? Is that Amen. the promise? Yes. Hallelujah. Are you a doer of the word? Man. Each one of us does have a choice. Yes. Will you be a doer or a hearer only? Man. First, we must commit our lives to our Heavenly Father by accepting the gift of salvation, which is a belief in Yeshua, belief in Jesus. Amen. Right. That He is the Son of God, that He came, He was the promised Messiah, that was promised to reconcile man to God that he actually fulfilled every one of the promises of the Messiah that were even given in the feasts. All right. Jesus did it all. Amen. Yes, he did. You have to believe he is the Messiah, the Son of God. Yes, yes. You have to confess him with your mouth. Yes. You have to Repent of your sins, but it's not a one-time trip to the altar. It is a constant surrendering of your life to God mm -hmm. and clinging to the fact that we can never be perfect. All right. But that's why Jesus died. Yes. 
There is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, Amen. who walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Amen. Now some people will say, yeah, you gotta, walk, you gotta walk after the spirit, you can't walk after the flesh, you're walking. True. All right. But if your heart wants to walk after the spirit, but you keep messing up? Who knows that? Where you got it? God. Amen. God knows it. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. What is our responsibility one to another? What did Jesus say? A new command I give unto you. A new what? Amen. Suggestion? Commandment. A new good idea? Commandment. Oh, Pastor Johnny, it's a commandment. Does that mean we have a choice? No. If we want to please God, do we have a choice? No. <laughs> a commandment. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. Amen. That's the most important thing. That God, Jesus said there were two things. What are the two things? He said you can hang all of the law and the prophets on two simple commandments. Michelle knows. Love your Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. If you could do those two things perfectly, Jesus wouldn't need to come. But none of us are capable of doing those two things perfectly. And there's at least 613 ways we can do those imperfectly found in the instruction book called the Bible or the Torah. We can't do it perfect. We don't love God perfect. We do not love our neighbor as much as we love ourselves. But we should want to. Amen? We should want to. Are you a doer? John 3, 16 and 17. Let's say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. So if God did not send his son to condemn us, who has every right to? Because he's perfect and righteous and holy. Amen. If God himself, the perfect, the righteous, the holy one, mm -hmm. did not come and dwell among us in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, to condemn us, All right. but to save us, why do we waste so much time running around condemning one another? My Lord Jesus. It's not our job Amen. to condemn one another. Amen. It's our job to seek God in our own life and to try to live according to his plan and to ask his Holy Spirit to do it and to love him and to love each other. That's our job. Amen. Are you a doer? We must obey, for he is holy, and we are to be holy. Huh? True. Yes. But are we able to be holy? Are you holy? Are you holy every day? Every minute of every day, are you holy? All in the Jesus. In the flesh, it's impossible. But in the spirit, it's possible. Amen. Because a willing heart is acceptable unto God. Amen? Yeah. We are to be clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Because we are not capable of being righteous in ourselves. All right. But as we continue to surrender to the power of the Holy Spirit, each one of us in our life 
He will continue to mold us and shape us and bring us into the person that he wants us to be. Why? For all of eternity. He's teaching us something uh -huh. so we will be able yes, yes. to serve him the way he wants us to forever. Amen. Because we have jobs. Yes, yes. We have jobs in his kingdom. Amen. You think you're going to be floating around on a cloud playing a harp? No. Turn into an angel with wings? No. No. The word of God says, first of all, the first thousand years, oh, we're going to rule and reign with Christ. And he gave us the example in his word of how he wanted us to rule and reign. He wanted to be the king himself and for his people to be priests, to minister to him and to one another. Amen. Go ahead. I'm not putting a hard yoke on you. When you look at these scriptures, these scriptures could be used to try to put a yoke of bondage on you and say, be holy because he's holy. I'm not saying not to be holy. Yahweh should be holy. We are not capable of being holy because God said, every man is a liar. The heart of man is desperately wicked. And who can know it? And the whole head is sick. That's what God says. All right. Well, with those three conditions, we're going to have a really hard time being holy. All right. But the blood of Jesus. Yeah. The power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The turning around. Yes. The teshuva. Yes. The repentance. The turning around. Oh, I'm going to try not to have California stops. <laughs> I'm always in a rush. Yeah. All right. And I'm like, I'm going to try not to just kind of roll up the south time and go through. Uh -huh. There's no other cars around. I don't see a police officer. All right. And I'll do really well for a day. <laughs> Maybe two. <laughs> then I'll be trying to rush somewhere. I, we've had transportation issues, and I ended up being the driver for a lot of different people that used to drive themselves. All right. And then some of my children that were working with me in business, their cars broke down, so then they couldn't even go anywhere. I had to be their drivers too. I don't have enough time in the day. I got balled out by somebody yesterday because they. They had texted me, but I was driving. So I was trying to do what was right, and I put the phone down, didn't look at it, you know? And I had been driving for a solid hour since they had texted me, and I never answered them. And they rolled up on me, and they bawled me out. Lord. You don't even answer your text messages. I'm sorry, I didn't see it, I was driving. You see, you're never going to be able to please man. All right, no. Never. Amen. And I might not ever be able to not do a California stop ever again. I'm going to get really good go. at stopping and filling up a nurse and jerk my car back. I hate, that's the part I really hate. Besides being in a rush, I just don't feel like it's smooth. You know, you can stop and shut my jerks. I hate that. I just got to That's what my daddy taught me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, now. <laughs> I need a chat. My, my, I'm trying to use myself and poke fun at myself a little bit. You know, I'm not saying it's right to run stop signs. That's why I recognize it's not right, and I try to correct the behavior. I got them pretty good, like where I only do it once or twice a day. Uh -huh. Well, when I spend like 250 
three miles a day on the road once or twice a day is not so bad because I probably run through about 45 to 50 stop signs in any given day. And so if I only run one of them, I mean, that's pretty good, right? <laughs> See how we justify? But what did Jesus do for us? It would be like, I get all these tickets for running these stop signs. Let's say I got caught every single time. All right, now. I would show up in court. <laughs> and the judge would say, your fine's all with me. You're free to go. What? Hallelujah. Yeah, you're done at your job. All right. That's what it's like. That's what salvation is. I don't want to keep running those stop signs. I really don't. I mean, I don't want to talk on the phone. It's a hard habit to break. All right, now. You know, I was in a field before it was illegal to talk on the phone and drive at the same time. And I was required to make 100 phone calls a day while I was in my car. My boss said, do not waste that to valuable drive time. You make a hundred calls a day. Oh my God. The only way I could do that was to make those calls. Some of them were only 30 seconds because you call, you get a voicemail, you leave a message. You know? I was trained and programmed to do that. So one day, all of a sudden, after 16 years of making a hundred phone calls a day in my car, I'm just going to stop? You know how hard it is to break the habit? It's really difficult. And so, you know, I'm, I'm consciously not putting my phone down. Or I'm putting it out of my reach. It's sitting in my door where it's hard for me to find because I've got a bunch of papers and stuff in there. Because I want to change that behavior. I don't want to kill somebody driving down the road on my phone and not paying attention and run someone down. That happens all the time, right? I don't want to do that. And by, good, by the, the power of God to overcome everything in my life, I will be able not to do that because he's going to help me correct the behavior. Do you understand? But praise God, my debt has already been paid. I just have to remain in Christ Jesus. Continue to repent when the Holy Spirit convicts me of sin. Continue to ask the Holy Spirit to give me power to resolve and to do the right thing. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. <laughs> we have Kevin do double duty this week. He's going to move my slide. You're done, no. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not at a loss for words, anyway. <laughs> I just see a storm in my time.
She's in pain. That one to him as another she made. He had dreams of the sun, moon, and stars. Right. Bowing to him. It was all representations of his family coming to bow before him. All right. He knew that God had a plan. Yes, God used that situation to save all of Egypt and all the known world at that time because there was a huge family. And God used that situation to elevate Joseph into the second highest position in the world under the Pharaoh, because they we were ruling the world at the time. He used it. What the devil meant for bad, because you know it was the old demonic spirit that got into those brothers or affected them or influenced them. The spirit of jealousy, yes. And others, David, besides jealousy too, greed, one less person to split all of the inheritance with. All right. Especially the one who thinks he's getting it all. Because after all, he got the coat of many colors. They all just got gray ones. But, but Joseph had the wisdom of God. And when his brothers came, he revealed himself to them. He said, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. So every situation in our life is meant for good. Because we are a child of God. He is the perfect father. The Holy Spirit is the perfect teacher, the perfect comforter, the perfect lover of our soul. So, we can rest in Him. And when we don't know what's happening, it's alright. We just can say, I don't know how I got to this place, Lord, but you do. Use it. Turn this around. Because all things work together for good. For those, here's a little bit of For those who love God. And our call according to his purpose. That part is love one another. Because his purpose is for us to love our neighbor as ourselves and to serve the kingdom of God as we worship and serve him. Amen. Amen. And then when we reach the end of this journey, and we're going to be a foreshadowing of that in this life as well. We can we those things that are not yet, they are, because the word of God says in Ephesians that we are currently seated in heavenly places with the Lord. That's what it says. Cheers. It's not a cup of wrath. It's not a cup of bitterness. It's not a cup of tears. But it's a cup of salvation. Yeah. A cup of righteousness. A cup of joy and speed. A full of glory. As we are seated with God in heavenly places already. That's what the scripture says. Check it out for yourselves. Please do. Please. 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 Check it out. This week, go home and read every scripture. Pick it apart. Ask the Holy Spirit to tell you whether what I taught you today yes. is true. God. Compared to the Word of God yes. and what He says, the Holy Spirit will bear witness in your spirit. Yes. And we can continue to grow and to live as the kingdom of priests. Amen. We need to talk to me. Amen? Yes, Let's stand together.